If you are interested in a 500 population village with level 3 buildings, a full market coverage, an infinite income, and a fully geared militia with male armor, you're in the right place. Today I'm going to share my updated build order for the fastest growing village in Manor Lords. This village is self-reliant, sustainable, autonomous, and, well, you can call it whatever you will, but it can handle its own. If you want to check out the step-by-step -step development of this village, you can check out the full gameplay video here in the top right hand corner. Otherwise, let me give you a quick tour of what your village could look like one day too. So for the village tour, as you can see, we have a bunch of granaries in the center. We have the church, we have the tavern, we have a huge marketplace. I mean, it's a co coincidence. You don't need that. Uh, you can have multiple marketplaces because they have been fixed in the new patch. Uh, we have all the villagers in level three buildings with every village villager having an extension in the backyard so the ma the majority of the time we went for chicken coops we also have goat sheds and uh vegetable gardens but the main driver is going to be the things that we set up uh, such as the blacksmiths the joiner shops the cobbler shops and pretty much the armorers uh, and that we are going to go into more detail when we when we get there but uh the village has two logging camps has two woodcutter lodges, has two charcoal burners. Uh, it has also a saw pit and uh, a bunch of forester huts as well. The main driver of our economy is, <laughs> you guessed it, the trading post. Uh, we have a rich iron deposit here, and that's pretty much mandatory for uh, for this uh, for this gameplay. And uh, I'm going to tell you pretty much why later but none but other than that we have a uh, clay furnace we have uh two bloomeries we have uh a weaver shop uh two malt houses i think we have two breweries so we have in total eight families wor working in the brewery and with that said i think we have two storehouses and uh you don't really need uh, more than that uh, like I said, a bunch of granaries for uh, market coverage. And finally, a forest, uh, forager hut and uh, a hunting camp. And with that, that's pretty much everything. So uh, let's get into why this build order is going to be the fastest. And we are going to start out with none other than the development points. So in total, you get six development points and you are going to want to spend it somewhat in this order. The first point is going to have to go into trade logistics. The second point should probably go into basic armor making. Now, depending on how much food, uh, food you have in your village and whether you have a shortage or not on food, you should either go for better deals to import food or you should go for charcoal burners. The charcoal burners are going to be important because that is going to have to take that is going to take off a lot of uh, pressure from the woodcutters lodges. And finally, uh, the two the last of the two points should go either into deep mining and advanced armor making, or the other way around. So pretty much the priority should be trade logistics armor making, charcoal burning, better deals, deep mining, and then advanced armor making for the chain mail. Now, putting development points aside, let's start out with the first year priority list. And that should be, well, you guessed it, reach iron deposit. When you start out the game, nothing else matters. Try and get a seed where you get a rich iron deposit. And then you are pretty much set for the entire game. And you'll understand why in a minute. Uh, land, fertility, <laughs> land fertility doesn't matter. I mean, <laughs> farming. As you can see, we don't have any farms other than just the vegetable gardens. And, uh, and well, that's because, uh, you know, it's cosmetic. You can do it after you've done all of this first. 
because their best ca best use case right now is just to get i guess cool screenshots to share with your friends <laughs> am i roasting um i think maybe but we both know it's true i know i know you know so the next the next thing uh so for the year for uh for the first year uh build order you are going to want to put down the logging camp of course but the second you are going to want to build the first three of your burgage plots and you should make all of those uh duplexes because it's much more efficient that way make it duplexes so you have six uh six um uh, spots for the first five families that you get uh from the from the start of the game then you are going to put down next your saw pit a new hitching post with the second oxen and then you are going to go straight for your first trading post and you are going to set up the export on the planks that you are making that is going to be pretty much the bread and butter of your early game and that's how you're going to increase your regional wealth and you are going to get money to upgrade all your burgage plots later but don't do that just uh first um you are going to get firewood you are going to put down your first woodcutter's lodge then you are going to actually go for the berries to get some food for the first year uh, after that you are going to build the church first thing first you should get the church done i think by june slash july so you start start out in march in three months time you should be able to have the church up because that is going to boost your approval rating and that is going to start getting the new families moving in and you're going to be good to go with all the production that you're going to have to set up towards the end of the first year so after the church you should put down also the hunting camp so uh the new families that are going to jo join you should have the hunting camp uh, working because uh, that is going to provide you with hides you are going to want to put down a tannery your first tannery and start making uh, leather so that you have market coverage for uh, clothing and then you start building a bunch of chicken coops uh with every fourth household having a goat shed to make hides for the tannery and with that uh pretty much towards the end of the first year you should have your first basic storehouse and granary down and that is going to be it for the first year now before you start your second year you should keep in mind that papa frank is a small modest growing channel so if you like his content you should consider subscribing and sharing a heartfelt like and comment for the youtube algorithm albeit small channel i reached a milestone i thought i could only dream of and now i unlocked memberships so if you ever feel like directly supporting the channel consider becoming a member thank you so the year two build order should be iron mining the new families that move in the first family should be put onto iron mining and then with that iron you are going to set up your first bloomery now just before moving on from this phase you should start setting up trading and start exporting everything you make so when you start making planks start exporting planks when you start making hides export hides when you start making leather just buy the trade route for the major trade of leather and you should start exporting leather and uh, for the first year and so when uh, you have uh, you don't have that many villagers uh, you should go for lower caps like 10 leather if you have more than 10 leather export the rest so you start making a bunch of money early game because that is going to be very important mid game mid game you are going to have uh, somewhat of a food shortage and you are going to start importing the food but before we get there you are going to want to uh, start setting up a few of the the households into first of all a cobbler shop once you get leather you should have a cobbler shop going on and that is going to uh, get you um, 
shoes. Now, those shoes you can sell on the market as well. So that is going to be additional, uh, additional income. And as your village grows, you should start putting down multiple trading posts and you should also start allocating more families to them so that uh, your th the amount of money you make per month uh, grows. Um, with that said, uh, the joiner shop should be um, in year two. The two, uh, the two things that are very important if you play a uh, restoring the peace or, or pretty much AI... Uh, AI combat or enemy AI uh, gameplay, you should have a blacksmith down and you should have a joiner shop. You should start pretty much pumping out shields, large shields and also spears. These two are going to be important for your spear militia and as your village grows, uh, you should have by the end of the second year when uh, the first uh, wave of bandits attack, you should have two, uh, almost two full rosters of spear militia. In this game, I had uh, two sets of 20 spearmen. So we were pretty much fine uh, till the end of the second year when the first wave of bandits hit. Uh, the next thing should be, uh, like I said, you, you should have joiner's shop, blacksmith and cobbler shop for the boots. And you should also export these if you have more than like 10 in the beginning also um don't forget that uh if you if you uh see that uh the market coverage is uh is starting to go down the food variety or the clothing variety starts to go down you should uh, upgrade your gran granary and your uh, storehouse and you should start allocating more people into into trading and that should be pretty much your focus on the second year just have your spear militia be ready for the fa first wave of bandits attack or or just combat readiness usually and if you have a short uh, shortage on food you should prioritize instead of uh, the charcoal or the basic armor making uh, you should probably prioritize the better deals so that you can start slowly importing some food. It doesn't have to be much. It just has to be enough to sustain your village till you get to, to, to the mid game. Now, year three is going to be all about gearing up your militia and just growing your trade uh, overall and your village. So by the end of year two, the beginning of year three, you should have... You, almost your entire village or at least a good chunk of your village at level two burgage plots because level one burgage plots do, uh, do, do not give you any income level twos give you one silver per month and level threes give you two silver per month so level two burgage plots is going to be very important for for just boosting your income as well it's not that much of an income so most of the income comes from your trade but it does help out um <clears throat> when it comes to year two year three uh development you should uh probably if you t took the the basic armor making and you now have a large village or a small town you should have uh pretty much helmets in uh in the works i think i am making helmets and also uh mail armor uh but we get to the mail armor in uh in a second helmets are going to be important because here's the thing in when it comes to uh level one level two and level three villagers level one villagers can equip helmets level two villagers can equip helmets and gambesons and level three villagers can equip uh helmets and uh mail armor the reason the reason why uh helmets are important uh, early game is because no matter what level uh burgage plots you have all of the villagers can equip helmets and that gives you the first layer of armor for your spear militia so early game it is going to be somewhat of a better uh your your guys are going to be much more tankier if you want to do combat besides that year three is going to be very relevant for exports so by year three you should have most of your exports up and you should export spears you should export uh, uh, large shields and also helmets um, 
so with that said, with that said, uh, later on you are going to have Gambus and Zen Mail Armor in the export as well, but uh, you don't have to uh, worry about that in uh, year three. Now, year three is going to be also important into starting to upgrade your village into level three buildings. And the first thing that you need to achieve to get to level three buildings is to have a tavern. You are going to have your tavern down and you are going to have your small stone church done. So the church needs to be upgraded. And that said, in order to, uh, to do that, you can actually import clay and you can export roof tiles. So you are going to start out with a basic clay mine and that, that's not going to be that much of, uh, of a clay in the beginning. So what you are going to want to do is you are going to go to the trade post, you are going to set up an export on roof tiles and you are going to start importing clay. Now that's because you are going to start your clay furnace and you are going to start pumping out roof tiles. Roof tiles all day. Now, maybe one thing that I forgot to mention in year two, that of course, once you start, uh, once you start mining, you should also start uh, uh, putting down the bloomeries and you should start making uh, uh, iron ingots. So that is going to be important for, of course, your spears and your helmets in year three. Um, with that said, you are going to upgrade the church first and you are going to start importing barley as well. Once you start importing the barley, you are going to have at, at the beginning, you can just uh, put in like 10 clay, 10 barley, because uh, not that many, not that many villagers are going to ask for ale in the beginning. So you don't have to spend that much money and uh, make that much ale or that many roof tiles in the beginning. Uh, so you are going to want to have your tavern and small church down and you are going to start upgrading into level 3. That should be pretty much towards the end of year 3 and the beginning somewhere in year 4. Now, in year 4, you should probably build the deep mine. As you can see right now, I have more than enough iron yet. But you should probably build the deep mine so you would have infinite iron. That is going to be very important as iron is pretty much your main source of income for all the armor that you are selling and weapons. And you could also set up tools to be sold at that point. You could also have the iron ore exported and the iron slabs as well. So with that said, I think iron is uh, pretty much the go-to when it comes to having a very successful village in a very fast manner. Now, you can start building your manor. So I have skipped my manor till almost year five in this gameplay, if I remember correctly. And that's because I didn't set up any taxes in the beginning. Once you set up your manor, so your manor is going to be a priority in year four, because from year five in the new patch, you are going to get the king's tax. The king's tax is as follows in the new nine point, uh, the 7.965 beta patch is as follows in the first five years including year five you don't get any tax from year five onwards you get one silver tax per villager you have so if i if i have 570 villagers i get 570 tax from year 10 onwards you get two silver per villager tax and in year three you get free uh in year 15 you get free silver tax per villager but i mean there's it is going to be a long way till you get uh to that level of uh, taxation and as you can see it won't be a problem trust me it won't be so the way you set up the land tax and pretty much the food uh for the food tax for uh for influence is you pretty much set it and forget it and pretty much all you have to do is one percent for the land tax and ten percent for the food tax now as you can see this pre this isn't really affecting my uh approval uh approval at all one percent is pretty much unnoticeable for my population and that helps out a ton with your gameplay i see a lot of people go heavily into taxes because they just don't want to get negative uh, balance or or anything but really 
one percent should be enough but if you really feel like oh my god i i might run into into issues you should put down you should put up a max of two percent land tax and your approval is going to be fine your village is going to be growing you're going to be you're going to be in a really good situation and with that said you just set it and forget it and i pretty much set it up in year four to five i think and uh, from there on out i just forgot about it and i got a bunch of influence and a lot of treasury as you can see we are doing just fine now continuing in uh, in year four after you set up your taxation or in between you're going to start importing flax. Now, flax is going to be important because uh, not only you started upgrading a lot of your villagers into level 2, but you also started in, uh, upgrading into level 3. And here's the thing. Level 2 villagers use, use gambesons. So you're going to import the flax. You are going to have a weaver's workshop working on... Uh, producing linen and you are going to have your first tailor shop now the tailor shop all you have to do here really is you have to just produce gambesons and once you get to a surplus of gambesons you are going to set up an export on gambesons so as you can see if i have more than 30 i'm going to export the rest now gambesons are going to be stopped uh, are going to stop being used once you get to all of your villagers to level three as you can see right now i still have some villagers using gambesons and that's because those villagers used to be uh used to be level two uh level two and after i upgraded them to into level level three they still held on to the gambesons but you can uh you can pretty much just um just forget about it because there's having no gambeson or male armor is much worse than having gambeson instead of male armor and as you can see uh in in between uh, in the meantime i started upgrading to level three and i started making uh male armor so now the rest of the villagers uh pretty much started using male armor instead of the gambeson so that's pretty much okay um as you can see <clears throat> in year four you should pretty much put down your second armor shop to have uh male armor being produced so in total you have two uh two armor shops you have a blacksmith for the spears you have a joiner shop for for the shield and you have a tailor for the gambesons uh the male armor can be set up much later it can be year five year six um, even year seven if you if you wanted to but that should be pretty much uh pretty much it and then once you unlock the mail armor and set up the mail armor, you are going to focus solely on producing as many mail armor as possible. And also, if you have a surplus, again, you are going to start exporting the mail armor because those are really expensive and those make a lot of money. Spears, mail armor in particular, and the large shields are going to make a ton of money for you. And beyond that, the charcoal burners are going to be a very important aspect of year 5 plus. Because after you have the woodcutter's lodge and you unlock the charcoal kiln, you should pretty much max out the families in the charcoal kiln. And with that, you are going to have pretty much infinite fuel. As you can see, we have almost three years worth of fuel and food in stock. And the one thing that I want to... Um, to let you know about and this is uh, pretty much uh this pretty much works for year two plus or year three plus is as your village scales you should also uh scale the import of food as you can see right now i pretty much maxed out all the import on food uh you don't have to do this if you don't feel safe doing this uh although it doesn't really impact because once it's bought uh you won't um you won't use up that much food uh in one go to uh to uh, use up all your regional wealth but you could start out with 10 of each in the beginning then uh, set 30 or 100 or 200 in the beginning to match the needs of your village because um, the, the needs of your village and the market coverage is going to be tied into how much food is available 
first of all. Second, how many people can supply the marketplace? So that is going to be granaries. And in our case, it is going to be the people at the trading post. As you can see, a lot of the people on uh, at the trading post have set up markets, food stalls to sell directly the food from the trading post. And that is going to be very important. And from here on out, from year four, five plus, from here on out, you are going to go into somewhat of a maintenance cycle. What you are going to focus on is build up trade posts. So pretty much the priority, the build priority should be having more trade posts as your families grow and you get more families. You're going to have trade posts, then granaries, and then storehouses as you can see this entire village 570 people it is doing just fine having two large storehouses two large storehouses having enough firewood planks and everything that that is pretty much necessary so as as the village uh, grows because right now i have 182 families but we could possibly have 200 uh 230 8 plus 4, 242 families in total. As your village is going to scale, you are going to want to scale trade, large granaries, and storehouses. And at a certain point, you should probably put down additional malt houses uh, and uh, breweries. The tavern is going to be fine, or usually with three families. I have made a village with 2,000 people, and all I needed is one tavern. So the tavern, usually if you feel like you have a shortage on ale, like here, the lack of entertainment, which is very small in, in my village, it usually comes down to do you have enough ale or do you have enough malt houses to produce the malt for, for making the ale. So I have two breweries. I have two breweries, which is uh, a total of eight families that are making ale and i have two malt houses which is a total of four families producing the malt and now you can make those beautiful farms and take screenshots with them <laughs> i mean I, i'm just joking you can make farms you can make whatever you want but this if you want a fast growing village if you want a very optimal and very efficient village that also looks cool and also makes you a lot of wealth and money and and you're really good on combat on combat readiness and such you should probably just ignore farms till you get to this stage in the game and then you can do whatever you want <laughs> from from there on out but with that said i think i covered everything if you wish to stay tuned subscribe for more if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and leave a comment and lastly, if you wish to support the channel directly, consider becoming a member. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye!